Now you may find yourself waking up with an annoying text. And you may find yourself taking delivery of a large automobile. And you may find yourself with a really bad car on the other side of the workshop. And you may ask yourself, well, how did I get there? When your friends come by and dump their rubbish on your workshop When your friends come by and shit mechanics couldn't make it once in a lifetime Because I'm never doing it again to the best four-wheel driving channel on the whole of YouTube that barely does any four-wheel driving. We've got V10 engines, we've got Land Cruisers, plural, and loads of fancies to make stuff with. Well, what's happening today? We're gonna to be verbally abusing mechanics because they're rubbish. Now, contrary to popular beliefs, I don't actually enjoy shitting on people, but today I'm making an exception because there is a long line of events that have led up to me having to fix the problems of two separate mechanics, and I'm not very happy about it, in case you hadn't guessed. So this thing has been dumped on me because it spent eight months in a workshop with a mechanic that was unable to make it start. It was driven there because it had a fuel leak, it had the fuel tank replaced, it was driven away, but the fuel gauge wasn't working. It was driven back again to get this fixed, and it never started again. So they messed around with it for a long time, couldn't fix it, passed it on to their expert friends who also couldn't fix it. So they gave this person an extortionately large quote to fix it of $11,000 in the hope that they'd get it out of their workshop. And unfortunately, it's ended up in mine. So why not make a video about it? So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I would diagnose a diesel not starting. And if you're a mechanic, maybe you can learn something. So let's begin. Now I've already done a lot of diagnosis on this car to get to the conclusions that I'm going to work on today. Anyway, this is what I've done leading up to this point. The first thing I noticed when I got under here is all of these vacuum lines, breathers, filler hoses, all the clips were off, there was a crack in one of the lines, and it was just generally fitted by an idiot. The next thing I did is I dropped the fuel tank because obviously there's a low pressure pump in there and if that's not working, you might not have the fuel delivery that's required to start the engine. Here's the fuel sample I got out of it. Now obviously having clean fuel is the most important part of a diesel engine and to start at the very beginning with the most basic check and it fails that so miserably, this is probably the best starting point. Now this is a common rail diesel, which is probably the most popular type of diesel as it's relatively modern and efficient, and it tends to work when it's not fitted to a Jeep. Now this system works by having a high pressure fuel rail connected to electrically operated injectors. Now what this means is there's a pump that maintains a constant pressure within the fuel lines and fuel rail, and this pressure needs to be regulated at all times for the car to work. Now this is the part where computers can be a good thing and a bad thing. In the good way, they can very accurately control the pressure. But in the bad way is if something small goes wrong, like dirty fuel, they can get confused, corroded, and eventually not work. So the first part of my operation was to drop the fuel tank, drain all the fuel, replace the fuel filters, and pump a load of fuel through the lines with some fuel additive in it to hopefully clean out the pump and everything like that. Because at this stage, I am trying very hard to avoid replacing a fuel pump because it's very expensive. Anyway, if you watched my last video on why I hate Jeeps, the fuel filter is under there. You have to unbolt the cross member, unbolt that weird little armored panel, and have several wrists in your arm to disconnect all the associated fuel lines. So I did that as well. Now what I found is that the car wouldn't start, but it would start if you gave it a bit of a squirt in the intake. And once it was running, it ran absolutely fine, until it was under heavy load. And then it would throw a code. This one. Which seems to be quite a common one for Jeeps. Now what this means is that the car is unable to maintain a certain level of fuel pressure. And this can mean bad news. This can mean that your main fuel pump's on the way out. It can mean there's a problem with one of the sensors. And it can also mean that your injectors are bypassing. 
Now on the subject of computer things, this is your fuel rail, and these are your fuel lines. This is a high pressure chamber that feeds to your injectors, which are under there. Now this is where the computers kick in. At the front here is a pressure sensor, and at the back is a pressure regulator. So the sensor tells the computer how to regulate the pressure. And in theory, it's quite simple. But first, I think it's time for me to tell you what the mechanic claims to have replaced. The fuel pump inside the fuel tank, with a genuine one, a new set of glow plugs, a diesel fuel pressure regulator located at the back of the high pressure diesel pump, a fuel rail, fuel rail pressure sensors, times two, the fuel tank itself, the fuel pressure relieve valve, all injectors and the fuel rail, all free of charge. <laughs> So thanks, Danny Lyman. There's a joke in there somewhere. Now I've taken out both the fuel sensor and the fuel regulator, and the fuel regulator I took out was rusty, thanks to the contaminated fuel. It was not brand new, it had never been replaced. So I replaced it with a new one. And this did not solve the issue. However, when it was running, it did stop the low pressure fuel error coming up. So, so far we've solved two problems. Firstly is a fuel issue that was caused by these guys as they replaced the fuel tank. And we've also solved an error code potentially caused by the bad fuel that these guys had put in. Moving on to the next bit, which relates to the injectors. Yes, more of my face and diagrams. Now injectors obviously take in the high pressure fuel from the fuel rail. And there are two things that it does with it. Firstly, the computer will tell it how much to spray and it will only tell it to spray if there's enough fuel pressure. And any excess pressure or fuel that isn't used is returned to the fuel tank via the injector bleed off. Now, if you have too much fuel bleeding off, your pump will never reach the pressure needed for the computer to tell the injectors to fire. And when you have injector bleed off, there's nothing really you can do except replace the injectors. Now, contrary to what diesel experts say, you can actually rebuild the injectors yourself. However, if you don't know what you're doing, don't bother because it's pointless. You'll just make things worse. But there are a lot of trade secrets in the diesel pump industry. But that's a topic for another video. We're debunking mechanics today. Anyway, as you can see from this lovely video, I've removed the fuel return lines from the injectors and cranked the engines, and you can see a huge amount of fuel leaking out of the bypass on cylinder three. So all that's left to do is replace those injectors and see what happens. So just as a comparison, this is a brand new injector. And we'll just have this as a bit of a comparison for the before and after, just to see what the brand new injectors the previous mechanic put in look like. Anyway, these particular injectors are supposed to be coded, as you can see from this little QR code here. It's all over the thing. Now this is related to calibration, and seeing as these are a two-pin piezoelectric injector, they're not going to stop the engine running if they're not coded properly. All it means is that maybe slightly too much or slightly too little fuel when it's coping with the original Jeep map. But all this means is that if it's a problem, it'll still run, and we just have to spend five minutes with a computer to get all the injectors coded in. But this isn't gonna be an issue for starting. So this is that problematic injector on cylinder number three. As you can see, rusty, corroded, clearly brand new. But most concerning is the fact that this supposed mechanic didn't even have an injector puller tool and they've snapped off all the edges here, trying to lever it out probably with a screwdriver. And it's probably hard to see here as well, but there's all sorts of marring on the alignment part that goes into the clamp. So yeah. This mechanic did absolutely nothing. Now, as I'm sure it's blindingly obvious from the condition of these, number three is that problem child, and that's the one that's rusty as hell. But seeing as replacing a single injector is a fool's game, they're all gonna go in the bin. So first step, clean all the bits that the injectors came out of, and then chuck everything in that fancy box into there.
Uh, just for those of you playing at home with unlimited budgets, obviously in the land of seahorses and Christmas trees, you'd replace all the fuel lines and everything associated with the injectors just to make sure everything is perfectly clean. And obviously this isn't happening, but I don't really see a problem with this, so fight me in the comments below. Now this is a true unadulterated first start attempt, so I'm probably not expecting it to fire over immediately. It does help if you remember to put that coolant hose back on though. Now obviously that was the initial start up. Since then I've taken it for a drive and there must have been some air that was cleared from the fuel lines. Now it starts like a normal car. So what have we learned today? Firstly, mechanics are the scum of the earth. Secondly, you don't need a computer to tell you what's wrong with your car if you actually know what you're doing. And thirdly, I'm an arrogant asshole who thinks I know more than everyone else. Bye. <laughs>